guess it's time for another classic car test. Well, today we've got, it's not quite a classic yet, but I reckon it will be in a few years. BMW M240i in convertible form. So F23, I think the code name is. Kind of a second version of the same generation or the second series. Unlike the current generation two series, which is only available in coupe form, uh, apart from the front wheel drive style of uh, Grand Coupe. This is based on the previous generation platform. It's not based on the CLA platform. Even so, it does have a pretty modern engine, which I'll get to in a minute, which is still kind of used in today's BMW models. I think this is going to be one of those cars that we look back at in 10 or 20 years time and just think, what, so hang on, BMW made a small convertible, which is pretty rare even today, featuring rear wheel drive, which is even more rare today, but it's equipped with a three liter turbo inline six engine. Huh? That doesn't make sense, surely not. That was a concept or a special, edi special edition or something. No, this was just a standard mainstream production car. It is at the top end of the two series range. Um, sorry to bore you for a second, but I'm gonna get a little bit complicated. This is an M performance model. So BMW has M Sport, which is usually associated with options and accessories and little enhancements for all BMW models. Then you have M Performance, which is also responsible from, for optional in enhancements and accessories, but they also build kind of bespoke variants. And then you have Full M, which is pretty much a completely, well, it is a completely different division. They make cars uh, with bespoke engines, bespoke suspension, and even modify the chassis and so on in some models. So this is an M performance model. It's a bespoke variant, although a mainstream variant within the existing model line or at the time the existing model line. This example we have here, thanks to a, a fan of the channel, Corey, big shout out to him for letting us uh, borrow this for a performance test. By the way, if you've got an old car or an older car, just not a brand new car that you'd like to see uh, run across the performance test, please hit us up on our Facebook page and we'll see what we can do to try and try and work something in. But yeah, this is a very original example, 74,000 kilometers on the clock, very clean. It still sort of drives like new pretty much. The interior presents like new. All of the fixtures and fittings are all still there. There's no scratches or major wear and tear or anything like that. It actually looks pretty much brand new. As you can see on the dashboard there, the trip computer, 10.2 liters per 100 kilometers which I think is pretty amazing for a car that's got 74,000 kilometers on it and that it produces as much power as this. The driving position in here is perfect as with most BMW models. Um, I could adjust the steering wheel up and down and in and out. It's a nice steering wheel too, three spoke. And then these sports seats in the front are awesome. They've got nice big side bolsters and you can adjust them as well. Power adjustable, just using this little button down here and a decent amount of room. I mean, this is a small convertible, so it's not a, uh, a four series style of vehicle. This is a smaller model, but I feel like it's spacious enough to go for a nice weekend away or something like that. You do have two seats in the back. They're pretty tight. I'll just jump in anyway, just to see. I've got the seat in the standard position for me. I'm 170 centimeters. If you're a bit taller, obviously it's gonna be pushed back further. But there you go, I am in. Uh, with the roof up, it obviously takes up a bit of headroom and it just makes it feel a bit more claustrophobic. But with the roof down, yeah, I, I, I could sit here for a nice cruise along the beach or something like that, no problem at all. It even has kind of semi-climate control where you can adjust the temperature separately and the fan speed and a 12 volt socket. A little storage box there. And yeah, no seat in the middle row. But I've got good visibility if you kind of lean to the middle you can see straight out the front easily. And then under the bonnet here, we've got the B58 three liter turbo inline six. It's not a twin turbo, even though some of the branding says twin power. That just means twin vane or variable or twin geometry style of uh, a turbocharger. Single turbo though, 250 kilowatts and 500 Newton meters, which is yeah more than enough power for this style of vehicle. It's actually the same motor that you'll find in the current Toyota Supra. Uh, or at least the first of the series of the current generation at that power output and now produces 275 or 285. Uh, they just bumped it up a bit, but it's the same fundamental engine. You could probably tune it very easily, actually. The owner is keen to see what this will do across zero to 100 in a quarter mile. The factory time is 4.7 seconds um, with 74,000 74, kilometers on the clock. Be interesting to see how much uh, power has escaped over the years. I've got a feeling it'll be probably about the same um, as it would meet the factory claim, I think. It feels 
tight, it feels responsive, uh, very punchy, and it sounds absolutely glorious. You can't beat these inline sixes. Out on the road, it still feels beautiful to drive. Trademark BMW steering, lots of engagement. The body is well controlled. It's not too firm though, so it soaks up the bumps quite nicely. But yeah, that steering is just absolutely perfect. All right, let's get stuck in. Uh, the owner said that he just fit brand new Michelin Pilot Sport 5 tires. They're staggered width as standard, 245 35s on the back, 225 uh, 35, I think, on the front. 225 40s on the front and he said to just feel free to get the glazing off the outside of the tire surface just for better grip but we've got great conditions here at the moment it's been sunny all day so the tarmac is I'm not going to say it's hot but it's not freezing cold um, and there's a lot of rubber laid down by the, uh, the owner of the property who likes to get out and do some burnouts and skids on the weekend. So at the start here, we've actually got a fair bit of grip. Let's see what it can do. You've got Eco Pro, Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus. And in Sport Plus, you've got a kind of sporty DSC mode, uh, which does allow some slip and play, but it also uh, makes available the launch control system. It's not really a proper launch control, but it does kind of set up the powertrain for the best possible launch. I'll also test it out with the DSC completely turned off and in manual mode as well. three three It was 
4.81. There we have it, 4.81 seconds, zero to 100. I think that's a pretty good time considering the factory claim is 4.7, even after, you know, five years or so and 75 or 74,000 kilometers on the clock. I still think this will become a future classic. Just the, uh, the recipe is awesome and just very rare as well. I don't think they sold many of these in convertible form. I know the coupe was a bit more popular and then the hatchback was even more popular, at least in Australia, which makes this a really rare model. And I think in the future, that'll just magnify and amplify even more. Thanks for watching.